Check this out. I got this on Facebook Marketplace for $15. But what is this? In February of 2006, Steve Jobs held a press conference at Apple's Town Hall Theater to announce a, well, a new dual-core Mac Mini, but more importantly, perhaps less importantly, this, the iPod Hi-Fi. Look, by 2006, to say that the iPod was absolutely dominating the portable MP3 player industry, that would be an understatement. At the beginning of 2006, Apple had over 78% market share. And with the overwhelmingly popular iPod came the billion dollar accessory market. And look, Apple didn't mind this industry existing as they charged a 10% tax for MFI or made for iPod certification, which was required for accessory makers to advertise iPod compatibility in retail locations. An increasingly popular accessory was the iHome and its derivatives, a, a dock for your iPod to charge it and play back music through a built-in speaker. Look, these never really sounded very good, but they were affordable and they often integrated secondary features like alarm clock functions. Jobs called these products out on stage, saying that they served the purpose of playing music in the home, but that they fell short of, in his words, home stereo quality. This video is brought to you by the Roborock H7, an excellent new handheld vacuum at just 3.2 pounds that is easy to maneuver, transport, and operate. With an ergonomically designed handle, you can clean up for 90 minutes thanks to this sizable LiPo battery. And with 160 air watts of suction, you will easily be lifting dirt and reaching deep into the carpets with the powered surface brush that features an auto carpet boost mode. The awesome throttle lock button now doubles as a child lock to ensure that the vacuum isn't used by those that shouldn't. The H7 features a larger dustbin with the same awesome five-stage HEPA support filter you're used to, but it now also supports optional bags. This is ideal for allergy sufferers or anyone wanting effortless dust disposal. When it's time to charge, you can fill up from zero to 100% in just two and a half hours. And the awesome MagBase now allows you to store the many included accessories effortlessly while charging and storing. The H7 is a vacuum that you do not want to miss. Pick it up today with the link below. You know, what, what is home stereo quality, uh, you could ask? Well, if you're an audiophile, what you'd say is, is four things. One, if you close your eyes, there's a sound stage around the speakers. You don't, the speakers disappear acoustically and there's like a stage around the speakers where you can hear the performers performing that's much larger than the speakers, right? So a large sound stage. The second thing, maybe the most important in some ways, is precise imaging and separation. Each instrument you can, you can place in space individually, right? Each instrument you can, you can imagine where it is in that sound stage and it's not, they're not all muddled together, right? They're separate, they're clear, and you can almost imagine, you can almost see where they are if you close your eyes in that sound stage. The third thing is a wide frequency range. You know, you want to be able to have great bass, but you also want to be able to hear, you know, the highest frequencies as well. And lastly, you do want room-filling power, but without distortion. So the product that they believed to be worthy of home stereo audio quality was this, the iPod Hi-Fi. Up top, it has a 30-pin dock connector to fit your iPod. And while mine are missing, I bought this used after all, it came with 10 snap-in cradles to fit your specific iPod model. And then there's two touch-sensitive volume buttons for up and down. Now, around back, there was a detachable power cable that is 10 feet long, a three and a half millimeter auxiliary input that accepted both analog and digital toslink cables, and then there was a door wherein you could put uh, six D-cell batteries to power the iPod Hi-Fi on the go, boombox style. Oh my gosh, okay, here we go. Now, these batteries would last between 5 and 15 hours of playtime, dependent on volume, but they would continually drain in standby since there was no power switch. Sound familiar? 
Oh, what are these doing here? I want to talk about this thing in detail, but not before I clean it up because it's disgusting. system are two 80 millimeter mid-range drivers and then a 130 millimeter dual voice coil woofer with a bunch of crazy bass porting. This thing has no screw holes in sight. They're all hidden under this aluminum front plate that is glued into place. And while you might say, <laughs> classic Apple, airtight design is actually pretty important in speaker cabinets. And again, to make great sound, you've got to have a sealed enclosure that doesn't vibrate. This thing is a sealed resin enclosure, and it's really, really good. This sealed resin chamber that Jobs speaks of is just double-hold plastic. I suspect it's polycarbonate ABS uh, because while I saw a lot of online reports saying it wasn't ABS, my goof off, which has acetone in it, melted through the plastic like almost immediately, which is a classic ABS symptom. But in any case, it has this honeycomb interior, which is designed to defeat resonance. And the mid-range drivers themselves are actually in their own sealed acoustic chambers. There are a lot of Appleistic attention to details. Uh, for example, this front grill, it doesn't buzz because the pins they're actually spring-loaded, which is ridiculously clever. I've seen loudspeakers that cost many times the price of this thing, where at certain frequencies, you get a slight vibration. Doesn't happen here. Look, I don't wanna to fanboy too much about the design of this thing, but it is gorgeous. There is no sign of drafting. There are no seams. The built-in handles are perfect. I mean, they, they look distinct and sharp, but they're rounded inside and they, they don't feel uncomfortable at all. There's a single green LED to indicate whether or not it's receiving a signal from the IR remote or whether or not you're performing an action on the volume buttons. It's silly, but very cool. The, the, the battery cover is insanely thick, uh, probably so that it wouldn't warp. But this thing, I mean, it just feels and looks stupidly over-engineered. So I guess the big question is, how does it sound? Does it sound as good as it looks? Let's find out. Okay, so th this thing can sound good. However, it is very picky. The whole idea with Apple's more modern Hi-Fi Venture, the HomePod, is that it's omnidirectional. Sound is emitted from everywhere. The iPod Hi-Fi, well, it is not like that. It is much more akin to a traditional loudspeaker. It really has a sweet spot, and the iPod Hi-Fi sweet spot is actually rather stingy. In my experience, it's from about 10 to 12 feet away with the speaker facing you head on at high level. If you're too close, the mids and trebles just completely wash out and it sounds like your body is inside a subwoofer. Conversely, if you're too far away, well, the speaker just sounds really thin. You gotta be right here. Now, when you're in the sweet spot, it still sounds too bassy for my liking, but it's pretty tight and the ports move an insane amount of air. Okay, I forgot to film this B-roll clip. It's 1 a.m. I'm gonna piss off my sleeping wife and my neighbors, but... That was a copyrighted song and it's really good, but you can't hear it. Mids, well, they're very suppressed. And the trebles, they can sound okay when not washed out by the low end. It's, it's basically a pair of Beats by Dre, but in a speaker. <laughs> Jobs said that audiophiles look for four things. Remember what they are? There's a wide soundstage, uh, precise imaging, a wide frequency response, and room filling power without distortion. The iPod Hi-Fi really only fulfills the last one. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's not a bad speaker. There are a number of tracks like Kanye West's Heartless and The Internet's Stay the Night that were standouts for me. In fact, I think in most, but not, not all, but most tracks it sounds better than the more modern HomePod. 
Despite all of the cool computational audio happening inside of the HomePod, a lot of what makes something sound good just frankly comes down to displacement, and the iPod Hi-Fi has a definite advantage. A fun aside, when you plug the iPod in, a speakers tab in the main menu pops up that lets you change the EQ and backlight settings. This is the third generation Fat Nano. It came out in September 2007 after the iPod Hi-Fi was discontinued, the same day, frankly. And it weirdly has the speakers tab, but doesn't have, in my opinion, the coolest feature demoed at the press event. Uh, the iPod would display full album art full screen when docked. Anyways, it doesn't matter because it failed, as did the HomePod. But the question you might be wondering is why? I've been thinking about this, and, and the obvious answer is, well, they're just too expensive. They were both $350. But I actually think that the opposite was true. Apple has evolved into a luxury brand, and their consumers will spend an insane amount of money on Apple's products if there is hype. And hype typically comes when the products are good. Take these, for example. AirPods Max. These headphones are $550, which is insane when compared to the Bluetooth competition. But these headphones are really good. Great, even. The HomePod and the iPod Hi-Fi, they were not great. They were just fine. And unfortunately, fine isn't going to get audiophiles, for example, raving about how amazing they are. The iPod Hi-Fi had near universal negative reception amongst the audiophile crowd. And the HomePod wasn't much better. People said, well, it sounds pretty good for being a tiny speaker, but that doesn't mean it sounds good. Be sure to check out my old review on the HomePod if you haven't seen it already. But Apple made the exact same $350 mistake twice. I think we can tell with the HomePod mini outselling the HomePod's lifetime sales after just mere weeks that the large majority of people, they just want a cheap iHome-esque speaker. The HomePod mini doesn't sound good because, well, it doesn't need to. However, I think that there is a market for a high-end speaker system, and it doesn't need to cost thousands of dollars, but Apple has demonstrated that they can't do it for $350. <laughs> I do think if they released a good product and there was hype behind it, people would buy it. So here begins my hope for a HomePod studio, a vengeful successor to Apple's failed speakers of yore. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, send it to someone that you don't like. They're going to hate it. Get subscribed for more awesome videos like this one. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.